Hey, what's up? I'm here with Kim and Ben from Soundgarden. Guys, welcome back. Uh, hey, how are you doing? It's, uh, it's good to have you guys back. Um, how does it feel to be back? Oh, it feels great. Yeah. Um, you know, listening to the record, one of the first things that came to mind, uh, you know, it's been too long. As soon as that kicks in, I just sort of wondered, you know, do you guys feel like it's been too long? You know, is that a, is that a mission statement? Um, you know, how does it feel? I mean, it's been a long time, you know? Uh, <laughs> we're just kind of caught up in this, so it's hard to think of it, you know, how to think of the, the absence. It wasn't like we were waiting for, what, 14, 15 years to, yeah. for this moment, you know. One thing about music, when you play it or do anything in your right side of your mind, time disappears. So once you get creative and start working with who you like working with or whatever, time goes away. It doesn't matter. It, it sounds like you guys didn't miss a beat. I mean, you, you picked up well, right off. You clammed all over the place. <laughs> you kidding me? That's Matt's job. How much fun was it? Because when, you know, when you listen to the record, it sounds like you guys are having fun. No, it was a fucking drag, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to come up with new material. And what about touring? And playing, you know, playing the stuff live yeah. and, and getting back yeah. out there again. Is yeah. that fun? That's something that we just kind of started doing. What's going on back there? <laughs> uh, that's our, our, our manager, and he and, my nose. Look at my nose. And, Look uh, at it. Our buddy Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the sound Part of crew? our management assassin team. Right on. <laughs> Those are our guys over there. Well, what's it like doing press and doing all this stuff again? He's got eyes in the back of his I head. I like it myself. These yeah. guys grouse about it a lot, but I like it. Yeah. Um, I have to ask, though. I mean, like. How many times do you get asked about what you love and what you love to do and everything? Not too often. Exactly. So there's no bitching on this side for me because we get to talk about what we love to do. So. And are you guys, do you guys still love doing it? You still love making music? Yes. yes. Yep. Or we wouldn't do it. Now, I'd imagine playing music is like anything else uh, where you have to keep doing it and playing. And obviously, you guys played while Soundgarden wasn't active. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how did you keep, uh, you know, involved in music? Did you, did you feel like you, you kept in shape musically? Do you know what I mean? Um, I was probably less active than no say. Way, man, people would come to you and ask you to play guitar. Yeah, I was doing a lot of sessions. The Probot stuff. record. Yeah, I didn't know that until today. Other, a bunch of other stuff, you know, but it was mostly small projects here and there and session stuff. Um, I kind of brought everything down a few notches, you know. I think probably intentionally to kind of <laughs> not have it be at the level of activity that Soundgarden was at, you know. Um, Mostly, probably just to not burn myself out, to keep the, to be able to pick and choose what I would do. You know, there was a lot of, I was asked to play with a number of people, and a lot of opportunities came my way, and I felt perfectly comfortable rejecting them. And, and even though many of them sounded interesting, I thought it was great to have the leisure to say no. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm and then something interesting came around, it's like, yeah, I'll do that. How did this all happen? I mean, how did, how did this, this conversation start, you know? I, I know you guys played, uh, I guess it would have, was a show with Tom Morello and the Night Watchmen in 2007, yeah, is that right? Yeah, that was, a, that was Ben and I were asked yeah. to, to play with Tom and do Spoon Man yeah. with him. He knew it, I guess Audio Slave had played it. And we knew that Matt was going to be in the audience because he said he was going to come down and check out the show. It, you know, had Steve Earle was playing and Wayne Kramer from the MC5. That's great. And Boots Randolph. And so I told Tom, well, I don't think we're going to want to play that for, you know, with Matt in the audience. We're not going to play it in front of him. We'll right. play it with him. We asked Matt. Matt said, yeah, I'll, I'll come up there and play that. So that, that kind of got everything. Did that start the, the ball rolling with the idea of Soundgarden well, not, coming back? Not, not really with Soundgarden mm -hmm. coming back. Just... Some people might have thought that because there was some buzz about the three of us playing. Totally. We had Tad come and sing. We need to find someone yes. to sing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people rejected the. We asked Mark from Mud Honey. He's like, I'm not going to try to do Chris's lyrics. <laughs> and that's what most of the guys we asked said. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt to sing, you know, uh, yeah. Chris Cornell. And, and Tad, Tad is kind of ballsy and courageous <laughs> and I'll do it. <laughs> Did he was so damn nervous. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but he went for it. You know, it was no, great. But he did it. Um, how did it. How did it all happen? I mean, I, mean, you, I know you guys have prob probably been asked this a million times. You know, why did you decide to, to bring the back the band together now? You know, why why did you? You know, what was what, what felt right about it this time? You know, never felt wrong in the first place. <laughs> did you guys miss it? Yeah. yeah, I missed my brothers. There wasn't any other band I could relate to like that, or 
you know, guys like Lanigan I'd record with, I could relate to them because they understand what life on the road is like. Stuff like that, you know, but usually, no, most of the people I jammed with were just hobbyists, so of course you miss the chemistry and the power of it all, the working of it. Yeah, there are, there are things that we shared as Soundgarden that was hard to find and relate to other people about. Well, you got to remember, we were growing young men at that point, you know, and we were still growing, and I was still growing as a kid through right. all that stuff when we broke up, so it's, it was weird for me to just, whew, this huge cliff, I'm like, wow, where did everyone go? What happened? Well, hindsight's twenty twenty. No, it's still going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys, um, you know, with the new record, and, and you know, do, do you, do you foresee this continuing? You know, are you guys back for good? We're back for the foreseeable future. <laughs> I, I, I would <laughs> after <good> <laughs> after after we've all you know loved and lost and have had bands break up. So I I would be really naive to say that yeah we're back forever. This is right. I don't even think that way about you know um, my significant relationships <laughs> anymore. Yeah. I was like at some point you get you know you get you know I think. You might believe that things last forever when you're 17 or in your 20s, but um, I think the, the reality is that as long as we're enjoying it, we'll do that. You hey, know? So and we're this, enjoying it. See this car? Yep. I got that right after our first tour with Danzig when I joined the band. Kick ass. Tell people cars. about this car. It's a 64 Ford Fairlane. It's been sitting in my yard since uh, Soundgarden broke up. No I just got it running. It runs perfectly. Yeah. I'm about to rebuild it. So it's like... Soundgarden as a machine or as a hot rod or something or anything, a creative project. Now that we've got it back, we can come back to it. And I don't drive this car ever, but I can. If you want to. Yeah, and that's what Soundgarden's like. We can do that now that we've reestablished that we're here, we can climb back in the, uh, what, were we, what were we calling it the other day? The time, <laughs> speed. Some kind of DeLorean? No, it was like a, it was like a, <laughs> Like the time enhancement, it's more about how like the time escapes you when you're working on something. It's more like a time machine time. It's not a machine though, I can't remember. We had a funny slang for it, but now that we've reestablished working together again, we can come back to it anytime we want. I mean, you guys sound like a well-oiled machine. Do yeah. you, do you... That's because we're professional. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of the fans? Speak you know? for them. I know, <laughs> we don't like professionals, by the way. We like to rock out. Nice. What do you... You know, there's a lot of, there's too many pros out there. That's why you think all the music's ballless in the world. Yeah, rock and roll and professionalism just Don't seems oxymoronic. Nice, I mean, professionalism, that's something for a Vegas entertainer, you know what I mean? Yeah. With, with you guys reuniting, I mean, does it put into perspective, you know, just how, you know, faithful and loyal your fans are? I mean, they were there the whole time. Yeah, that... You, you, you know, to me, I never noticed people going away or not because Seattle kind of acted like, oh... The, we're the dirty secret. Oh, don't talk about the old days. And never hear us around there. You never have any fans or anybody talking about it. Really? This little bubble there. Never talked about the 90s. You'd never hear the music from there. It's weird. But I guess the rest of the world was keeping up with it. It was like <laughs> twiddling. Oh, okay. Those, those old jokers quit. God, they walked away. <laughs> Left us abandoned. So it's cool that, you know. I actually would like to personally thank Canada for being here at all. Right on. You guys always supported us really righteously, and I like that. You guys have you guys have fun up here. I mean, Seattle's yes. pretty close. To we've always, you know, there there are a few beautiful. countries where we're very. We've always been very strong, and obviously, you know, the U.S., Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, and there is a special place, you know, certainly that we feel for Canada. Yeah, uh, there's an enthusiastic support. It's, um, it's an honest rockerness to it at all. It's like it's cool. Keep coming up here, boys. There's nowhere like this in the world. Do you guys? Um, I'll move this along. I know you got to go, but um, you know, looking back on the on on the, the '90s and I guess the '80s as well. Um, you know, what's changed? I mean, a lot's changed, obviously. I mean, you probably record on different stuff now, right. you know, and, you know. Technology's changed. Yeah, what is it like, uh, you the know. The industry's changed. I mean, record companies are, what, yeah. they're, a th they're, they're a third of what they used to be in terms of. What's it like watching, their, have, have, have watching all that happen, you know. I can only talk about, like, what it's like as a musician now. It's changed, like, how we would research music or like an era of music and find it and everything. Now, it's, I, I don't know how kids 
or right. people that are into music find what they like because it's easier and more difficult because there's so many options and so many ways to do right. it. I miss record <coughs> stores where you learn how to drop the needle, smoke out, smoke cigarettes or whatever, you know, and it, that was where you saw what was cool and how like the other side of the fence works, you know, before you have to be professional. This is what you're like. And it's like a rite of passage to go through the whole record store phase of your life, you know, and learning music and learning your culture. Now it's all just spread out and nothing. And it's weird, like shopping mall world. Do you guys, are there any bands out there now that you guys really dig that, you know, you're carrying that torch, you think, that are, that are still real? There's, there's tons of innovative yeah. people, and a lot of them probably aren't even putting out records yet right now. And I miss, you know, having a club scene to go see live music. There's there's so many bands and some of them some of the ones that we really like don't necessarily rise to the prominence that, that they may have before there there isn't necessarily radio or I mean even MTV uh, on some level Sports where they used to play music right they, they, they don't even play music anymore they, they would have little specialty shows yeah. that would show developing artists and then they're they're great bands and just don't have the money or interest in promoting themselves by make, investing in a video, you know, which are like little commercials for their, for their yeah, they songs. they put their money into their own stage yeah. show, you know, they put it behind them, you yeah, know. Yeah, tour, tour, tour. Yeah, tour, 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 and then instead of spending the money that does a certain market, they put it into their live show, like their mixed media behind them, which is totally cool. Yeah. Uh, what's on the iPod, guys? <laughs> I don't, or I don't on the record iPod. player. I actually then. do not have an iTunes account. Really? At home, on my record yeah, player. What's on the record player? At home is Duke Ellington. Nice. Right now, that's what's on my turntable. I have the uh, very best of Dennis Coffey. Um, he was one of the Funk Brothers, yeah. leader of the Detroit Guitar Band. And uh, I want to find the band The Books. I know that they've broken up, they've turned into something else. Other than that, I've occasionally been playing. Wow, it's it's this is strange, but I, mean, I, I just got a Saint Vitus box set. If you remember that band, there. Well, when did they put out a box set? <laughs> or they well they did well it's it's like a it's a they have the it's actually not a box set. It's it's like their new album plus a DVD and I think there's some live stuff. Remember how grizzly they used to seem? Like, yeah. Wow, that's heavy. Well, that's, I grizzly. Dave, that's Narnoff. Ran to Dave Chandler in Sweden. And where else did we see him? We saw him a bunch of places. But we came to our New Orleans now, show. Now to me, when I listen to it or hear it, I think, wow, that's a band that would be on chips as the bad acid rock heavy metal guys. You know? <laughs> there's a band Weird. from Brooklyn that's really cool called Oneida that I've been listening to. And of course, I, I really like the band Sun and Boris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kim's all heavy doom meister. Yeah, I like a lot of I like a lot of the the doom. What I like about it, I mean, some of the I, I guess I shouldn't call it doom, but maybe well, the that's drone. Josh Graham is part of that whole neurosis scene. Yeah, neurosis and stormalite. Yeah. Cool. And um, that the doom thing, I guess, uh, I guess some of it's the psychedelic, like black psychedelia, dark psychedelia is what you might call some of it. I always called it poison candy. That's the kind of music. <laughs> I call, right? All right, guys, thank you very much. You're welcome very much. <laughs> it's gonna be the weirdest <laughs> edit ever. <laughs>